It's Clickmas, and here comes your festive feast of fun. We've got games, music, drinks, it's a water bottle, and gifts. And we'll even help you clean up afterwards. Merry Clickmas, everybody! Welcome to Clickmas 2021, which is already looking more expensive than Clickmas 2020, isn't it? Remember well, that? Well, at least it's not a virtual party, oh, but have we got a Clickmas for you. Yeah, well, I say it's looking more expensive. It will do once we switch on the Clickmas lights. Would you care to do the honours? Oh, I've always wanted to be asked to turn on the Christmas okay. lights. And I'm going to go one better than that. Are you ready? Definitely. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Ta-da! Oh, my life! <laughs> It's even a Clickmas laser. What could possibly go wrong? And that's the best handwriting on Click. <laughs> oh, by the way, have you bought all of your Christmas presents? Uh, not yet. I've still got to get some smellies for my dad and some smellies for my mum. Do your whole family smell? They do, but I want them to smell better. <laughs> OK, I think I've got just the solution for you. Right. But you're going to have to come with me to a Christmas market. Come this way. OK. I have to warn you, the salesman is a bit of a wheeler dealer, though. Roll up, roll up. Hang on, I recognise that trader. Mm. It's only Nick <laughs> Quen. Oh, hello, Spencer. Oh, hello, hello. Merry Clickmas. Merry Clickmas to you too. What on earth have you got? Well, this is the world's first artificially intelligent smart perfume. Right. Have a sniff of that. It smells like a mum. <laughs> I don't know if it smells like my mum. It's very strong. Isn't it? Yes. Yes. Isn't well, it just? the idea yeah. behind the Ninu is that it's one size fits all. Because the last thing you want, you know, is on Christmas Day when you open up a perfume and you don't like the smell of it. Well, mm. with this thing, you can choose what you want it to smell like. Really? You control it through the Bluetooth connected app. How does that work then? Well, inside there are three different canisters, each with its own unique scent. And depending on what you select on the app, then it mixes each together to create your own bespoke with and it can create up to a hundred different combinations for every can sounds like a good deal so do you reckon your mum's present sorted yeah well well uh, fortunately thing. this is just a prototype it won't be hitting the shops until at least next spring well, what are you here for then <laughs> okay slight <laughs> problem but maybe i can fix it yeah. does your mum like click she's my mum of course she mm. does she's our viewer exactly so she might enjoy our highlights of this year it was the year that started with a virtual consumer electronics show with all the fanfare and frolics of um, sitting in a room alone. <laughs> yes, but there were still smart pillows and smart earrings, smart blenders, smart masks. Very topical. But we did get out and about, didn't we? We went to Ireland, Iceland, Finland and Dubailand. Honestly, this is the greatest projection I've ever seen. We also saw virtual reality being used with life-changing results. It helped guide this family through their decision on whether to operate on six-month-old baby Archie. The theatre's just being prepared as in a few minutes Archie's coming in for his surgery, where a spring like this is going to be inserted into his skull through a small cut. It will immediately expand and start to change the shape of his head and then continue to do so over the next four weeks. At that point, it can be removed. Invented by Dr Gilani 13 years ago, this technique has reduced operation time from three hours to 40 minutes, cut blood transfusions by 90% and provides more predictable outcomes. That piece had to be the most important part of the year for me, technology mm. really making a difference. Yeah. 2021 was the year that Omar tried out for a football team, but the AI scout said no. Oh, things soon picked up for him, though, as he discovered he was the proud owner of a Pokemon card worth a small fortune. Take this card. I got it in a pack when I was a kid. Dark Raichu, a secret rare. 
850 pounds. Meanwhile, Chris put his feet up, all in the name of discovering the perfect posture. <laughs> Honestly, though, he can make anything look good. I mean, he is rocking this jacket, isn't he? Oh, yeah. Here he is at the AI Song Contest. Each of the 38 entries had to use some artificial intelligence in the process. That song there was by a group called Smorgasbord, and if you recognise the pixelated face, that's because it's Click's very own LJ Rich who has entered the contest. So LJ, how do you even get started with creating a song using AI? When I work alone, the music always comes first. But when I'm working with other people, I normally feel inspired by their lyrics. And so with this, it felt very natural to get the AI to generate some lyrics for me. That's great, and it's our LJ. Yep. Mark managed to break from gaming and took us to the metaverse. Which is totally not a game. The metaverse has been described as what comes after the internet. Dan's done a little bit of driving. Well, a lot of driving. I've come to Switzerland. Yeah, and then he did something about his emissions by sucking a whole load of CO2 out of the air. Paul went out to CCC to see what he could CCC. Come on, keep it together. But unlike its namesake, which took more than 100 pilgrims to the New World in 1620, the Mayflower 400 won't have any people on board at all. <laughs> and had his mind read. Oh, go on, there we go. Yeah. Jen took us all the way back in time to Pompeii and all the way forward to next week's shopping delivery. So we're now in the hive, and it's called that because the robots are operating kind of like a swarm of bees would. But as this year draws to a close, friends old and new have been there by our sides. I find you rather intriguing. Can we be friends? I am not alive. She's looking I am a non-conscious machine. However, I'm interested in friendship in humans. Did she send you a Christmas card, though? Uh, no. Typical. What a year it's been. It was lovely to be back in the same room, wasn't it? Sorry, what? Yeah, it was. Even if I couldn't hear a word you said. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> wow, well, we have done a lot this year, haven't we? Considering. We really have. Yeah. So maybe it's time for a break from some tech. Really? Even for us. Wow. Yes. So we've sent Christina Criddle to the countryside for a bit of a digital detox. This is the cabin where I'm going to spend the next few nights. I'm here for a digital detox to see if being with my phone makes me stressed. I use my phone a lot and sometimes I feel like it can make me a bit stressed. I'm trying to keep up with social media, my friends, the news, my emails. I can't be the only one who finds this exhausting. I found out that the University of Greenwich was doing this experiment into digital detoxes and to see whether putting your phone away when you're on holiday can make you less stressed. To participate in the experiment, you have to wear this tracking device that measures your activity levels, your heart rate, even how much you're sweating to see how stressed you are. I had to wear it for a full day a week before I went on holiday to see what my stress levels were like on a normal day. I arrived at a cabin in a woods in a place near a town called Pulborough. It was really remote and I remember pulling my suitcase up this gravelly path in the mud thinking what am I going to do for a few days without my phone, without technology, just in this countryside cabin. Right. Goodbye babies. There are also a few things that they leave you in the cabin just in case you might need them. There's a map a compass, well I don't know how to use that, there was a torch and a brick telephone just in case of emergencies and that was it. So I locked my phone away and I waved goodbye to civilization. So on the first night I tried to go to a nearby pub. It was about 30 minutes walk away and I was using my map, navigating the country lanes, really excited to go. But then I got quite lost. If I'd had my phone I could have looked up the directions, I would have known what time the pub shut. The next day we did manage to find a pub. It was in the middle of nowhere and it was a really nice countryside pub. On the third and final day we went to this local vineyard. They were having a harvest festival and it was really fun and I find in those experiences you don't really miss your phone because you're just enjoying life. On the morning of getting my phone I couldn't wait to get up and I was just really anxious just wanting to find out what my phone was going to say to me. And when I did look at my phone, it was fine. Nothing had happened. 
In fact, nobody had really messaged me. It was a bit disappointing. A few weeks later, I went to meet Wenji Kai, who's the lead researcher on the experiment, to chat through the results from my wristband. And I found that my stress levels after the trip were way lower than before the trip. And actually, they only started to peak again as I went to pick up my phone from the lockbox. It's actually quite interesting, the anticipation of reconnecting um, actually caused more stress than the actually re reconnecting itself. After the experiment, I just went back to using my phone as normal. Um, did other people find that as well? Actually, a lot of participants did some changes in their everyday life. Some of them left their mobile devices in the living room when they go to bed, and a lot of them read much, much more. Obviously, I was very relaxed, but I was also on holiday in a beautiful place. So I wonder how much of it is not having my phone versus just being on holiday. Um, I think it's very different because um, when you go to the holiday in a very nice place and if you're still on your phone, it's really distracting for you to really take in the whole experience. But when you do not have your phone, you really have the opportunity to really spend this great time with your companions. Although Wendy said that my stress levels went down during the experience, and they did, I'm not sure if I would go on a digital detox again. I really like having my phone on me on holiday. I like to use it for photos, sharing my time with friends, and more importantly, looking things up, nice places to eat and go and experience the holiday in the way I want to. So I don't think you need to go to a cabin and lock your phone away in a box to switch off. What you need to do is be more mindful. So if you're out with friends or you're in this beautiful location, just try and put your phone away and forget about the notifications. Live in the moment and just enjoy it. I could do with a break like that, especially ahead of CES in a couple of weeks. Oh, yes, it's all going to kick <laughs> off again, isn't it? Yeah. Here, I tell you who would absolutely love a place like this. Oh, Dan. Yep. He loves Christmas and he loves buying good Christmas presents. Yeah, he does, yeah. In fact, this year he has really done something special. Really? He seems to be in Germany. What? Yes, I'm on the hunt for that perfect Christmas gift for you both. Lara, well, you might have got something a bit sparkly, but well, didn't quite seem right. And Spencer, well, I considered a new look for you. But ultimately, I wanted to sniff out something that might surprise you both, and with a bit of science behind it too. And my nose has brought me here to Munich, but not to the shops around here, but to a startup that has created this. It's a water bottle with interchangeable nozzles and they have different scents. So you can have mango or cola or watermelon and it makes the stuff inside the bottle kind of taste a bit different. But what's inside is just plain old tap water. Christmas magic? Well, according to the founder of the company, no. The product is a body hack basically um, because we we copied um, how our flavor perception worked for a certain part of it. And um, so when we taste something, we will taste our basic flavors through our tongue or over our tongue, but the rest of it through our nose. And it makes 80% of our flavor perception. So it's a large part. And this part we copy with our product. So when you drink out of our bottle, you will drink water and scented air and this scented air will let your brain think it's um, drinking something with flavor, even though it's just pure water without any additives, calories, sugar, or anything. Now, I know that may seem quite a lot to swallow, so I've sent a couple of these bottles back to you guys in London to do a taste test. And I know that it's unlucky to say cheers with just plain water, but it's all meant in the best possible taste. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Dan! Dan. <laughs> we got a couple of these bottles here. I think you need to try one. I Take a sip and see what you think. What fruit does that taste of? Oh, it's peachy. Okay, well done. I'm impressed. You try yours. What are you getting? Okay, actually just tastes of water but smells of fruit. <laughs> Can you tell what kind of fruit? 
No idea. Oh, Absolutely no idea. Grapefruity. I think it's a bit like fruit tea. I hate where, fruit tea. Oh, well, that, that's going to be a problem then. <laughs> it's all in the smell and not in the taste. Yeah, like exactly. Mm. But whilst we're in the festive mood, I've yes. got a little game for us to play. Right. Now, Pictionary is probably my favourite game. I know it is. You're a monster. As you know. Yes. Indeed, but I can't draw, which is, of course, the irony of this, but the technology <laughs> doesn't actually help with that. Now, this is called the repaper, and the way that it works is you can use any pencil by attaching this little item to the end of it, or you can use the pen that comes with it, and then you don't need the piece of paper, but it, of course, connects to a smartphone. Oh, right. So, well, then. This uh, should be good. So, let me draw something for you. You're saying this could be good, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what my drawing's like? Gone wrong is it already. a banana? Uh, not it's a, a horse? Ba not a banana. Oh, no, I've clearly got this wrong, haven't I? But um, there you go. You can... is, it, is it a Nokia phone <laughs> that was never, ever oh! launched because it was just the worst design in the world? <laughs> That'll be it. Um, anyway, this can be used for more sensible purposes if you need it for <laughs> art can or it? some sort of um, yeah. work. Which this is oh, neither of. <laughs> Go on. This is... This is the remarkable... It's the first remarkable but, thing I've seen today, well, let me tell you. Well, yes, and seeing as it's for more professional purposes, I'm going to hand it straight to you. Uh, right, you so this is an e-paper. <laughs> it actually feels like paper as well to draw on. Right. Right. I'm realising now that I am just as awful as you. I tell you what, though, paper is quite cheap, and I'm guessing this isn't. That's very true. Any idea? It's a sock and a bath. Mm, weird, yeah. So... Water? Water and socks? And socks, yes. I think yes. this may have something to do with the fact that Chris Fox asked us for our dirty laundry. Yes, which is not as weird as it sounds. Doing laundry is a time drain at the best of times, especially at Christmas when there's so much else to do. So I'm helping the Click team with theirs. But I'm not going to wash all this myself. It's going to a startup that hopes to change the way we wash. According to Oxwash, the way we do our laundry at home is wasteful, but by stacking up lots of little innovations at their modern laundrette, they can make the process more eco-friendly. There are several ways that this is supposed to be more eco-friendly. The first is over here. Any heavily stained clothes get blasted with compressed air and water. So you're not using loads of chemicals in the wash. And then the clothes go into these fairly standard washing machines. And the secret, I'm told, is using cold water. So you're not wasting loads of energy heating up the water. How do you get clothes clean with cold water? You use a special detergent that is automatically dosed from these bottles. And that creates ozone, which sterilizes the clothes. And then the final extra step is right around the back, there's a filter to take out any microplastics and fibers that come off the clothes so that doesn't go down the drain. To put the service to the test, I've got this wine-soaked tablecloth, no questions asked, a gravy-stained runner straight from the Christmas table, and a pair of stinky old trainers, which are all off to go through the ox wash treatment. Of course, washing is only half the story. For drying, wet sheets and towels go through this heated roller and folder, which can dry sheets in seconds using less energy than tumble drying. Although at the moment, the company does still use some fossil fuel powered tumble dryers, which it hopes one day to remove from the process. One other thing I just have to show you is this Japanese clothes steaming robot. It makes sure that your clothes don't have any creases in them and also don't shrink in the wash. Now, this is why I've worn this creased jumper before any of you comment on it. So let's get this on here. That goes over the dummy. Spin around. And now to make sure the shoulders are right, we enter gym mode and beef, <laughs> beef up the shoulders. Good. And then... <laughs> That's me after Christmas. <laughs> there we go. Release the sweater. Ready to wear. Oh, it's so warm. There you go. I'm gonna have to get one of these for my kitchen. <laughs> While the Click Laundry went through the wash, I went to meet the company's founder, Kyle Grant, who, after getting tired of washing his rugby team's kit at Oxford University, decided to start the company. It's about £25 a month for a wash a week. Isn't it going to work out cheaper to use your washing machine at home? Actually, when you take into account the washing machine that you have to buy, all the energy that goes into it and everything, it does work out about 10 to 15 per cent cheaper. The big saving is in the time. You don't have to do it yourself. Just takes that pile of laundry and gets rid of it. 
Well, two days later and my laundry arrived and I really can't fault it. It really did all come out very clean, especially the shoes, they came out almost like brand new. But the challenge for this company is gonna be convincing people to give up the convenience of washing their clothes at home, especially for those unexpected Christmas spills when everyone's had a few too many. That was Chris Fox doing our laundry, which was nice of him, wasn't well, it? was it? very kind of yeah. him, but I think he may have added a little bit of red wine to that tablecloth. Yeah, I wouldn't have wasted that one, <laughs> to be honest. Meanwhile, over the other side of town, Paul Carter has been to meet a very important guest. When it comes to musical superstars, they don't get much bigger than Bjorn Olveus of ABBA. He was talking to us about a new software solution for session musicians. More on that in an upcoming episode but I took the opportunity to ask his wider thoughts on tech and music. We've seen technology kind of evolve in music over, over the years. I wonder what your reflections on, on technology being used in, in modern music are. You know, Benny Anderson and I in the 70s, we used to be in one little room in a cubicle with a stand-up piano and a, an acoustic guitar and two guys singing some kind of gibberish. <laughs> Pop, English, Swedish something. There are no recordings of that, thank oh, God. Oh, shame. <laughs> but, you know, to get a kick out of that, there had to be a really good melody. Whereas the songwriter today, he, he has got all his stuff. He's got his computer and he's got all these wonderful sounds. And when he is com or she is composing something, it sounds wonderful from the word go. And I think sometimes those songwriters might become a little lazy just to, to give up before the melody is perfect just because it sounds so good. Um, I think that's the advice I give to songwriters today, that don't tell me you've written a hundred songs this year. Tell me you've written three really, really good ones. This, this is going to sound a weird question, but do you almost think there's too much music nowadays? You know, funnily enough, um, an app like TikTok helps because someone finds a piece of music somewhere and does something funny with it and that's like a, a trailer for that song because people get, oh, that, that, that's good, where does that come from? Fleetwood Mac is such a good example, happened lately. Youngsters need something to prompt them to listen to music and for them all the world's music is there and for them whether it comes from the 70s or or now doesn't matter as long as they like it so tech's almost changing the way that we discover new music i think so yes pop music has always been tech driven when benny anderson and i were like in mainstream pop we listened to everything every new tech gadget there was out there we had to get it every new sound what's that what's that we have to get that and you're still embracing technology now i am yes um i'm having a an avatar built of myself from 79 1979 uh, i didn't choose that year i think the ladies did uh, because they thought they looked their best and and i agree so i'm having that made and that's going to be very very interesting to have the old songs sung by these young avatars and at the same time there will be live musicians playing the music so the old voices live music and avatars Bjorn, thank you so much for your time thank you that was paul talking to the mighty Bjorn Olveas, how marvellous was that? And I'm afraid, though, that is the end of Clickmas 2021. It's pretty glam, though, wasn't it? Well, it's a bit more Moulin Rouge, maybe. This is true. But anyway, throughout <laughs> the week, you can keep up with the team. Find us on social media. We're on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at BBC Click. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with us throughout 2021 and a merry Clickmas. Happy Clickmas. <laughs> <laughs>